Good morning, I'm Eastern PA Weather Authority Meteorologist Bobby Marchich with an update on Tropical Storm Hermine for Thursday morning. Uh, we're taking a look at this satellite imagery right now and uh, seeing the most of the convection, the strongest convection is still on the eastern side of the system and southeastern side of the system. It's starting to show signs that it wants to wrap around the uh, top here, but uh, we're starting to run out of real estate and time here because uh, center circulation is actually back here, right in this area. Uh, and uh, this is moving off to the to the north northeast, so it's going to head in this general direction of the eastern panhandle of Florida, maybe into the western Big Bend area. Somewhere in this vicinity, we'll have a landfalling tropical storm or Category One hurricane. I still think this has time to go uh, to strengthen to a Category One hurricane, uh, but again, we're running out of time. It's at 65 miles per hour this morning. Uh, gusts are up to 70. And they're finding those strongest winds here in this area of convection down here uh, when the hurricane hunters went in. Uh, they have, uh, so the latest recon mission they have uh, does show flight level winds up here in the uh, above 65 knots. So that's why you're seeing uh, such, uh, such high uh, such, such high winds with us right now. You're seeing 65 gusting to 70. Uh, but over here on the, uh, the surface wind, you can see the highest we're getting here is just barely over. Uh, barely at or, at or over 50 knots. So really not uh, super strong here, at, at least what they found at, at uh, surface level uh, for for winds yet. So this is going to uh, continue to strengthen. It's still showing signs of that strengthening. Uh, one thing we're noticing, though, uh, if you go on this image here, on the west side of this, you're still not getting much of uh, much activity around this center of circulation, which is right here. Uh, so you're starting to get some wrap around around like the top here. This might start to wrap around here, but again, you're losing the real estate and running out of time. Uh, this was facing a lot of dry air and shear intrusion from the west. The shear has slackened quite a bit. So uh, it will have an environment before landfall uh, between late tonight or early Friday for some strengthening to a hurricane before it does make landfall. Uh, going over to the National Hurricane Center track, we can see uh, that the cone has now shifted east a little bit. Yesterday, uh, again, we have a hurricane here at landfall project, projected by the National Hurricane Center. Uh, but yesterday, the track was going to take it something up like this here. And it was taking it uh, kind of on the west side of this cone here to a position right about here. Uh, so that would have huge implications on our coverage area here. But you can see the western part of this cone now extends into uh, right, right up to about Allentown here. And, uh, and that's it. So it's as far west as it goes and actually east of Harrisburg. So... Uh, Southeast PA, all of New Jersey, Delaware, still in this cone, but the most probable area that they have now is further east. And I think they're adjusting a little bit uh, to some things that we're seeing on, on the satellite imagery. First of all, let's go over to uh, the positioning of this system. Uh, right now, again, the strongest winds are right in here. They're finding the latest center uh, of circulation right in this area right here. And this is moving off to the north-northeast, so it's heading right here into this uh uh, area, eastern panhandle of Florida area in that general vicinity. But again, all the strongest part of the storm is down here on this side. Uh, so uh, areas along uh, Florida here, not just in this area here in the Big Bend, but also all the way down to Tampa and maybe a little bit south of that will feel some pretty good effects as this uh, these uh, come on shore. Uh, these waves will come on shore. But again, we're not really talking about uh, a, a super dangerous system yet. But if this does get into this uh, rate rates uh, just off the coast here. We can have some rapid strengthening at least a hurricane strength Yeah, we only need need uh, eight miles per hour for this to strengthen to a hurricane uh, As far as sustained winds go so that won't take much to do that now The track is moved a little bit further east and that's because the overnight model guidance has shifted east a little bit except for uh, The GFS at 6z which has now come back west so it's, we're going to have to see what the, if this is a trend today. We're looking at the 12Z guidance, and then we're going to have another video later today updating that. Uh, but the GFS is already off at landfall. We're already down to 992 millibars in the latest update. It's showing 1,000 millibars at landfall, so obviously that's incorrect. Uh, strength not really important here, but it does have the idea that all the way to landfall, the heaviest uh, impacts are on the east and southeast side of the system here. Not really a lot of wraparound on this side here. Uh, so the areas in western Florida... Uh, over here by Destin, Florida, and places like that should feel less in the way of impacts than, say, uh, further east in the Big Bend and all the way down to Tampa. Okay, so this is going to move a little bit forward from this point. We're going to take this uh, take this image forward and just show you what it's doing. It does come uh, over southeastern uh, Georgia. 
uh, stays inland on the GFS and goes over uh, eastern North or eastern South Carolina and then eventually eastern North Carolina. Now this is still further east than what it has been, but you can see what it does. It gets off of uh, the North Carolina coast and just continues up to the to uh, the north here, and uh, it starts to retrograde a little bit. Now you can still see some impacts, uh, some pretty good impacts across our region from Ocean City, Maryland, all the way up to. Uh, Sandy Hook, New Jersey. Every, all those short points in between will be getting, bat getting battered pretty hard here. Uh, so even though it's not a, at this point, I'm going to get this right today because I, I really screwed this up yesterday. I don't know how I did that, but it is a warm core system when it makes landfall. It's going to be transitioning to a cold core system once it gets up here, probably somewhere over uh, in the vicinity of Virginia, North Carolina. Once it gets to that point, then it transitions to a cold core system which means it loses char tropical characteristics and becomes extra tropical. But the impacts for this does not lessen. And just because it says 997 millibars here, this is still a very strong storm. Uh, and it's, you have a fetch off the ocean that's going to be uh, causing some beach erosion. It's going to be uh, producing very high waves over 10 feet. Some storm surge along the coast from a couple feet here. Some flooding, coastal flooding, and also uh, the back bays will be flooded. Uh, from this on store, uh, onshore surge of wind and rain. Now, the extent of how far west this gets is still in question. Again, the models have shifted east a little bit with this, so it's going to be hard to tell how far west it gets. I never was really a fan. If you saw these videos that I was doing earlier in the week, our daily, oh, excuse me, the daily forecast videos, I was really banking on this thing staying further out uh, southeast like this, and it's heading out to sea and missing this high pressure. Doesn't look like it's going to do that now, uh, but it, I don't think it's uh, you know as far as as further inland impacts. Uh, that's still yet to be determined. I never never was really a fan of that, but we'll see how that transpires. Here's the GFS uh, continuing the next frame here, uh, showing that uh, the, the heavy rain moving into interior Pennsylvania, uh, and then that just continues. Uh, to sit here and spin for a couple days before this thing finally moves, uh, get, loses steam and moves eastward. And here's a look at uh, Labor Day Monday. This thing finally starts to pull away, but you still have the uh, high rip currents and surf along the, uh, the, the, the shore points here. Going over to the ensemble now, this is also from 6C, uh, shows a very tight cluster right around the Delmarva. So again, this is basically what I called yesterday nor'easter on steroids at this point. Once it transitions from a warm cord to a cold cord system, it's basically like a very powerful nor'easter, nor'easter on steroids. So it's just going to in have incredible uh, fetch off the ocean here with heavy rain and wind coming into the area. Wind gusts along the shore could easily be over 50 miles per hour, maybe 60. Uh, but I think further inland, once you get west of, of I-95, I think your winds are really dying down considerably. So you're probably getting some, some gusty winds, 20, 20 to 30 miles per hour, uh, but nothing really crazy. Uh, once you get southeast 95, that starts to increase to 30 to 40, maybe uh, 40 to 50, uh, just inland off the coast. And then right along the shore points from Ocean City, Maryland, all the way up to Sandy Hook, we're looking at uh, wind gusts that are, are, are over 60 miles per hour at times, even though it's not a hurricane anymore or tropical storm. It's all post-tropical at that point. Here's the European model, a little stronger here at landfall uh, as it moves off to the northeast. The next frame here we're going to show, uh, let's see, next frame is right here, uh, comes over, similar to the GFS, comes over eastern South Carolina, gets off the coast a little bit further than the GFS has it. And then uh, because of this, this is where I think the National Hurricane Center decided to shift the tracks. This is kind of like a, a European model track right here, right in the middle. So I think that's what they're doing here is they're shifting everything east uh, with uh, with the European model and what it has done. It looks like it may have overcorrected yesterday at 12Z and they're trying to bring it, and the models are bringing it back down southeast a little bit. We talked about that yesterday. Part of that was the lack of organization in the Gulf of Mexico and the fact that it was moving so slow, but it has now picked up steam. It's moving up uh, to the north-northeast about 11 miles per hour. So as long as it's moving, that allows this thing to continue uh, to move ahead and not get caught under this ridge as quickly. Now, it will eventually do that. That will get caught under this ridge and get trapped, and that's one of the concerns we have for this area. Here's this system sitting off the coast. Now, this has a very powerful system at 978 millibars uh, sitting here at, uh, this is now Sunday Sunday evening. So you have a tremendous amount of impacts along the shore points, but you see where this yellow is here? That's probably the extent of how far the rain gets uh, from this system, even because it's uh, all the way out of this, all the way this far out eastward. 
So it would be a very uh, rough go at it for the beach points here, but you get further northwest of that yellow into this orange area, you're just dealing with clouds and some breezy conditions, maybe some passing sh passing shower from one of those bands rotating through. But uh, this is far enough east that the, it lessens the impacts for the interior under these circumstances. Now we go a little bit further again. Uh, European model keeps this thing just kind of drifting there because it gets caught under this ridge and this high pressure. Uh, so it's it's over the top of the system, so it really can't it can't go anywhere. It's blocked, so the only thing it can do is just sit there and spin, and that's what it's going to do. So it's going to kind of wobble around out there for a day or two, maybe three. Uh, and here's a look at uh, this is now late Tuesday. It's starting to drift a little bit further away, but still very strong. 969 millibars. It's a very strong storm. Again, not a major hurricane like it would be if it was warm cord, but uh, it's still a very strong system. And then it finally starts to drift east toward the end of the period and go up in effect uh, into the Gulf of Maine, where it affects New England at that point. But uh, and you know, so we could be dealing with this for a couple of days. Uh, European Ensemble is very close to the operational in the fact that it brings it out. Uh, further off the North Carolina coast. So this is a change from yesterday. Here's your center low pressure for the mean. Uh, yesterday, this thing was up about here. So that's a big difference in impacts of how far inland these get. So I'm not sold on the farther in inland impacts. If you're northwest of 95 and you're watching the video here, uh, I would I definitely expect clouds. You're not going to be a sunny, it's not going to be a sunny weekend. Uh, but at the same time, I wouldn't bank on uh, tropical storm force or nor'easter type impacts. Uh, to get too far inland, it might just be it might be a sharp cutoff here uh, once this thing gets cranking offshore. But anywhere along, anywhere New Jersey and Delaware, maybe extreme southeastern PA, you need to be paying attention to this closely because there could be some some uh, pretty good impacts there. Uh, we don't know if it's going to go a little bit further east. Any further east jog of this in future runs will, uh, or you know, in the actuality of it, where it tracks, will make have huge impacts on who gets affected and how badly. Uh, and I would expect the short points would not be a good place to be this weekend regardless. But further inland, you could be talking about uh, just clouds and that's it and no rain whatsoever, maybe a little bit breezy. But, uh, you know, if it comes a little bit farther west like we were showing yesterday, then we got to have to worry about more interior impacts with those gustier winds coming and, and heavy rain coming further inland. So right now we're going to kind of sit back and watch and see what the, the models do at 12Z. Right now this is the morning update based on the overnight information. We'll have another update later this afternoon or evening. I'm Eastern PA Weather Authority meteorologist Bobby Marchers, and that is the latest update for Tropical Storm Hermine. We'll talk to you later.